I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of. Are you dying to know? It's Trisha's dying to know. I am. Looks like you got a pole blown out your head there, Trish. <laughs> it's not a pole. It is a pole, but it's not going out of my head. It's this. It's a lifter. Yeah, it's the body lifter. Body lifter. Hi. Hi, we're, guys. We're back in the mortuary. We are. We are. With our friend Cal. Calvin here has kindly agreed to, for us to do a little demonstration. Okay, and what we're doing a demonstration, aren't you? A head post. Yeah. Which you may or may not know what that is. And we've already done a video on this, so yeah, we'll link we to that up there. Yeah, we have. But generally, correct me if I'm wrong, yep. a head post is when you get somebody back from an autopsy and the coroner has chosen not only to look at this section, yep. but also into the brain and yep. take some samples of the brain, which means they have to remove part of the skull. Yeah. And often when you get them back, they haven't done such a neat job of putting it all back together. Let's no. put it that way. No, no, no. All right, so we'll leave yeah. it with you and you can talk us through what you do and show us what these gr gruesome tools look a bit full on. And Screwdrivers and hacksaws and chisels. And, are they chisels? What are those things called? Files. These files. Let's see what she does. Okay, Trace, what do you reckon? Anyway. Okay, so um, a head post, yes, you're right. It will be done at, um, by a, a pathologist at the coroners um, where they're looking for cause of death and looking maybe it's in the brain for something but if they can't find it they've done an autopsy in the thoracic area. Okay, should we be worried about that alarm? We've got an alarm, can you hear that now? Do you know what that is? She doesn't even hear it. Because it goes off every day. It's a pacemaker. It's a defibrillator. It's in my bucket of pacemakers and defibrillators and... It's there to tell us that it's not working. <laughs> well, that is still switched on and the hospital hasn't switched it off. Anyway, okay, so when you've had a head post, um, the pathologist will look, cut through your scalp from ear to ear so you can peel the skin forward and the skin back. And then with a, um, a saw, they'll saw ah, the, top of the, skull. the top of the skull off. Right. Okay, so it comes off in one, Shoo, like piece. That, yeah. in one piece. And they'll remove the brain. And what they'll do, they'll either take samples from the brain or sometimes they keep the brain for a while before returning, but normally samples. And then when they're finished with that, they took the slices off. A brain, if it's not embalmed, is just turns to jelly once it's removed out of its casing and everything. So it just turns to jelly in mush. So you can't get it back into the uh, skull area. So that brain would be put into a bag which is called the viscera bag with all the organs which is the viscera your organs i'll link to that video yeah so um that would all go into the bag and place back into the cavity of the body and suture back up so the skull's empty so the skull is empty and what they would do um when the uh, pathologist is finished they usually have to fill the skull with some kind of uh, material absorbent material cotton and then they would attach the skull go back to the head using what we call calvarium clamps which is which is strange given this guy's name is calvin it is the calvarium clamps for I'll, calvin. I'll just show you them clamps close up there you can see them um and what usually happens and what happens a lot is because at the pathologist coroner's area, they're not about you know presentation and everything like that. They just need to know what's going on with the body and what the cause of death is. And, and sometimes the skull's not sitting correctly on the head, and you get a ridge, and it looks a bit like a bit like Frankenstein. So we've got this really deep ridge, and um, it's not sitting right. And the families are going to have a view, and they want it. It's just it's just not nice. So we would have to take the head the a head post apart again. So what we would do, we'd take out all the sutures that have been put back in from where the skin has been put back together, take it all out, open it back up, take the skull off, take all that packing out, put it into the clinical waste, and then we would clean it. So obviously you've got the skull cap part we'll take off. Take the cap part and take it to the shower, and we've got warm water, we'll just run that through to clean it off with the water. And then just with, this is just cotton in here, it's cotton. In and cotton and this is um, a quadrant you can see on there it says it's a quadrant now this will seal the blood vessels so basically what this is is um, you know you don't want this injected in yourself because it's going to seal all that blood vessels up 
it's going to stop any leakage. So what it's doing is, because we've got so many tiny capillaries and vessels in our skull and on the skull cap itself, it still keeps bleeding, it leaks slightly, so it leaks a lot and we need to stop all of that. Plus, we need to stop all the fluid coming out from down um, the spinal cord, because you'll see right down the spinal cord area. Okay, can I just stop you? So you've washed the little skull cap over in the warm water. Did you get the shower nozzle and washing the skull? No, no, no. What no, I've done okay. there is I've got my cotton and I've cleaned out with the cordurant, cordurant okay. chemicals. So right. we give it a good clean out, good clean out, inside, outside, and even after I've uh, rinsed this under warm water, I will still clean it and seal it with the cordurant because it seals then mm -hmm. any of the leakage from the tiny, tiny capillaries. At that point, the person's face and skin is peeled down? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you're not looking at their face, so you're just looking at... No, no, the, all that skin is forward. Okay. You know, it's all forward down in the back of the head's down. It's all, okay. the, all we've got is the skull, yep. um, which I don't know, if you probably can't see my picture over there, but it, it, this is what you look down onto. Yeah, that's what you've been looking at. Uh, down into the spinal cord there and that's what I'll be cleaning out there mm -hmm. inside so I've cleaned inside I've cleaned with the cord ring in the cotton and we've sealed it and I've cleaned down where the spinal cord goes down and what I need to do now is stop any fluid coming out from that spinal cord so we have put in this absorbent powder it's an it, autopsy uh, absorbent powder and that will get poured down the uh, spinal cord so, so just you put it in there? Yeah, yep. yeah, we put it in and then I'd sprinkle all the inside of the skull and the, 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 the uh, skull in my hand, everything with the autopsy powder. And this again absorbs any leakage as well in terms of to, to crystals instead of fluid. Right, So because you don't want that leaking when somebody's no, having a viewing no, 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 obviously. Because, yeah, it will leak even though we've gone and sealed it together. So. Done all of that, it's all cleaned. I'm happy that it's not leaking anymore. So what I do if it's all cleaned is I get cotton, a lot of cotton, and I pour cord run all over my cotton, place it in so it's like a replacement of a brain. It's it just fills that empty cavity up so there's somewhere for the skull to sit. It fills in there. But just before I actually put all that cotton in, I have to, to do what is quite graphic here. Um, is actually um, make some tiny little indentations just above the earlobes here um, because what we need that them calvarian clamps need to sit flush we don't want them sticking out so when you put them in because you've got a screw if you put something on top we're gonna have a gap yeah and it's gonna sit yeah and that's what gives you that reach yeah so if um, I've either used the hacksaw, which is sometimes a bit, but I tend to use the file more than the hacksaw, um, which is basically filing in to make some little grooves. So I've got some, you know, so your groove is going to be about the width of this, so that yeah. can sit in there nicely and be flush. So it's going to be, so this that the top's going to sit flush and we're going to have no lines here so that's going to sit on there and it's a self-tapping screw so i will obviously with my screwdriver just tighten so how exactly does it work you've got the grooves you've got the piece of skull in your hand yep, so i'll so put then these what? into the grooves so yeah. they're sitting into the grooves and i'll put the, the skull in there yep. and it sits in there and, it sits oh, and then this tightens the onto it yeah right so then when i oh. screw that it's a self-tightening screw. It'll tighten itself up. Yeah. So that then grips the top of the air skull mm -hmm. on and it holds it. But it is now flush and we don't have any ridge here anymore, but we've got a point of leakage all the way around mm -hmm. because there will still be a tiny gap here. It's never perfectly flush. So we need to fill that gap and we need to fill that big gap with something what we call an inner seal. Mm -hmm. And basically, if you can see that, it's a putty, it's like a kind of putty that we use. And with my spatula thing, is I would get some, and then I would go across the groove, basically. Seal it up. And seal it all up across the groove. So that would go all the way around. 
where I would seal all the way around and smooth all that out. We've done that. We've sealed everything up there. What we need to do now is bring the, um, the, the face back up and the back of the head back up. So we're pulling the skin back and we're pulling the face back up here. So when we've done all of that, I need a tool. When I've got the, the skin back together, we then with these clamps, will clamp the skin back on in a couple of areas. So I've got the, um, the held. Yeah. it's held securely. And do you have to do a little bit of, you know, maneuvering and... Yeah, you do a little bit, but not too much. It usually sits pretty flush because it's, it's only really that the face is only coming off to right. about here yep. to the for, uh, just above your eyebrows. It had, the skin hasn't actually been removed right. from the, the whole skeleton. So it's just moving that forward. So I would clamp the skin back together with these clamps and then I would do my normal suture. Mm -hmm. So it's a baseball suture that I normally do on this. Um, and if it's long hair, you just clip the hair back and out of the way. And so I would do my normal suture Seal that right so up. So just skin to skin, skin to skin. Yep, yep, yeah, all the way around. Um, and once that's all done, I, um, just before I put the hair and everything back, and before we do the final washes, I, I will drop some glue, like inside where I put the suture. That's just an extra sealant, just mm -hmm. for any leakage to stop. So, and then wash the person. You know, wash the hair, wash them and finish off the preparation. And, and style the and, hair so it covers yeah, that as best yeah, possible. And then do the face prep, because I haven't done the face prep at no. this point, because we don't want to do that at that point. So then I'll do the face prep after we've um, done the wash and everything. So yeah, and if we've got a lot of hair, it's great. If we've got no hair at all, we do say to the family, it'd be advisable if you bring a hat or a scarf, if it's a lady or anything, just, you know, you, they're aware that they've had all of this done. It's just sometimes nicer to cover than have it it's open. It's quite confronting. But if it, you know, it is open, I will have tape, skin colour tape on, so it doesn't, you know, you're not going to see them stitches. So, yeah. So that's basically the instruments we use in a head post. Wow. So there you go. All right. Well, that'll probably raise some questions for a few people. So if you have any, please don't yeah. hesitate to let us know. Yeah, absolutely. Very interesting. How often would you do that? Uh, head posts. Oh, I've done... One a month, one oh. a week. Well, you get spits, you know, you get runs where you've got a lot of autopsies and then you get runs where you haven't got any autopsies. Yeah. So it's, yeah. uh, it depends, but it's it's not uncommon. You know, it's quite common to do a head post. And uh, I remember my first, very, very first head post. It took me nearly four, five hours to do it because I was so scared and I was so, and it took me so long, but now it's, you know. You know what you're doing. You know what you're doing and it, take, it still takes a long time. It still usually takes over an hour to do the whole process, yeah. you know, just on the head post. Um, but yeah, it can be quite confronting. But in the end, you know, it's always to make them look just as they were before. So yeah, any questions, pop them down. Yes. Thanks for that, Trace. That was really yeah. interesting. I'm always intrigued about how your instruments and um, the products you use are uh, often things that we would find lying around in the yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, like you've got your screwdriver and you've got your, your files, uh, your files yeah. you know, and stuff in your little hacksaw. Oh, your little hacksaw. Yeah, it's all, you it's know. It's very varied your job, isn't it? Yeah, mm. it is very varied. So there's a lot of tools and, and obviously we have a lot of chemicals which really do help in incidents, yeah. in incidents where we need them. Um, some assistance to stop leakage and make everything good so let's get that yeah. stuff off cal yeah we need to wash them again yeah thanks guys thanks, thanks. for tuning in Yay, thank and you um much. don't forget you can hit us up on instagram yes are you dying to know with underscores between each word yeah and um and also you can email us the email address will be at the end of this video if yeah. you want to talk to us about anything but um yeah it's been great being here thanks Jess. Yes. yeah it's been uh it, yeah I can't say fun. No. No. It's not fun. Well, it's it's fun doing this. It's, yeah, it's, 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 not fun it's good. Doing it's good. It's good, and it's a good uh, information video, and it's nice to do some information and let people out there know what really goes on. And That's right. Um, yeah. Any more questions? Please let us know. Yeah. Until, Until next time. Bye, guys. Look after yourselves. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye.